hear the word of God as it is written in the book of the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 7, reading from verse 51 through to chapter 8, verse 1a. Acts 7, 51 through to 8, 1a. You stiff-necked people, your hearts and ears are still uncircumcised. You are just like your ancestors. You always resist the Holy Spirit. Was there ever a prophet, your ancestors? Your ancestors did not persecute. They even killed those who predicted the coming of the righteous one. And now you have betrayed and murdered him. You, who have received the law that was given through angels, but have not obeyed it. When the members of the Sanhedrin heard this, they were furious and gnashed their teeth at him. But Stephen, full of Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. At this, they covered their ears and yelling at the top of their voices. They all rushed at him, dragged him out of the city, and began to stone him. Meanwhile, the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he fell asleep. And Saul approved of their killing him. Beloved, the word of the Lord. Our gradual hymn is ancient and modern 702. <laughs>
you. Hear the reading of the Holy Gospel according to St. John, chapter 6, reading from the 30th to the 35th verse. John's Gospel, chapter 6, reading from verse 30 to 35. So they asked him, What sign then will you give that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, always give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. My brothers and sisters, the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O God. I speak to you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In our reading from the book of Acts, we read about the martyrdom of Stephen, the first martyr of the church, and how his example challenges us also in our time to witness about the good news. Stephen was one of the seven deacons chosen to serve the tables. Some of the members of the church came with a complaint, the Hellenists, saying that their widows were not being catered for. And so the apostles, in their wisdom, appointed these seven deacons to attend to the tables to run some sort of food program for the widows so that they, the apostles, could devote their time to prayer and teaching of the word. Now, Stephen is described in the reading as a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit and who was performing amazing miracles and signs in the church. So much so that he incurred the envy of some of the members or opponents of the church. And they reported him to the council in Jerusalem as a blasphemer of the law of Moses. So Stephen was given an opportunity to defend himself before the council and demonstrating amazing wisdom from somebody filled by the Holy Spirit. He spoke truth to the authority and challenged their belief that true worship was about a place, which is we said about our having moved here this morning. That true worship is not about a place, the temple in Jerusalem, but it's about where God lives. So true worship can take place anywhere because God's throne is heaven and his footstool is the earth. And so Stephen said to them that God could not be confined to a place built by human hands. And he accused the Jews of being hard-hearted and stubborn and killing all the prophets who had been sent to them, including even the Messiah. Stephen's words were not very complimentary, but he spoke the truth. And the people got angry. They stopped their ears. They refused to listen and reason and ground their teeth against him. So you can imagine the state in which they were. They were really worked up. But the question I put to us is that are we also not like them? When the truth is not complimentary to us, do we refuse to listen? 
Do we always want to hear the good things being said about us? And when the truth comes to correct us, how do we react? How do we respond? Do we become defensive and angry and take it out on those who mean well or may have been sent by God to us? And do we also grind our teeth? When you, when you get to the stage when you are grinding your own teeth, it means you have lost all reason. Do we also do that? And attack those ones who have been sent for our good. Are we also sometimes cowed into submission when authority threatens us? And we refrain from doing the good, we refrain from speaking out because we are concerned about what we will get and our own welfare. Not so Stephen. We are told that he, full of the Holy Spirit, could not stop. He was impelled by the Holy Spirit to testify and to witness the good news. Are we also sensitive to the promptings of the Holy Spirit? Do we listen to him when he directs us to speak? Or do we offer excuses? Their response was to stop their ears. But you know, the, the good thing was that Stephen had already told them anyway. At the point that they stopped their ears, he had recounted from Abraham's time, you know, a very concise summary of, of the Bible. He had spoken to them about their hard-heartedness from Abraham's time uh, up to the present when they had killed the Messiah. So even though they refused to listen, they had heard. And they took him out and stoned him to death. Have we also sometimes ignored sound advice and gotten ourselves into trouble? And are we afraid and ashamed to go back and ask for forgiveness? God is willing to forgive us if we acknowledge our sin and repent. From the narrative, we also learn that our efforts at proclaiming the good news will also encounter rejection and sometimes persecution. When that happens, we should count ourselves worthy to suffer for him as Jesus himself suffered and the apostles also did but only if we are led by the Spirit. And we are not being persecuted for being offensive and insensitive in our conduct. Because sometimes we also can be offensive in the way in which we evangelize and approach people. I'm told there was a certain man who lived on a certain street somewhere. And this man was so full of zeal, whoever he encountered, he said, you know you are going to hell. So everybody started avoiding him. When they saw him, they would walk on the other side of the street. Are we offensive in our evangelism? Or we are attentive to the leadings of the Holy Spirit? We are told that Stephen forgave them as he died. And his prayer and conduct was a seed for the conversion of Saul, who was a witness to the stoning. And so Stephen did not die in vain. The blood of the martyr spoke. And so, dear friends, we also never know what God will do with the seed we sow. So let us not give up in our efforts. Let us not write anybody off. Because look at the ministry of Saul when he became Paul, after he was converted. Because Stephen, when he was being persecuted, offered a prayer and asked God to forgive him. 
In the gospel, the point is made that salvation is not about signs. Stephen performed signs, mighty miracles. The same people who saw those signs turned and murdered him. As Stephen recounted, Israel received all the signs they needed. And yet, they rejected the bread of life, Jesus. Which sign didn't Jesus offer? The feeding of the 5,000, the healing of all manner of diseases, his teaching with power and authority, the raising of Lazarus from the dead after four days when his soul was thought to have departed this earth. It is not in the signs because we will keep asking for signs. But it is about faith. Faith in the one who utters the signs. Because my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, signs are leading many astray today in our world. And the question we ought to ask ourselves is that, are these signs pointing us to Christ? Because don't forget that when Moses did his miracles, the magicians of Egypt also performed miracles, similar ones. And so let us be mindful of our signs, the acquainture and the things we keep following after. Because all of the power is in the word. All of the power is in our faith, in the word. And it's not about signs. We can be easily deceived because of signs. And you encounter people who, because of signs, have not put their faith in men and women. It is about Jesus. He is the bread of life. The signs are only meant to strengthen our faith in Christ, the true bread who gives immortal life. As bread gives strength when we eat, likewise is Jesus sent into the world to renew us, to re-energize us, and to refresh our sick souls. And as much as food is vital to the body, in the same way, Christ is vital for the soul. Christ is the bread of life. Not the signs and wonders of this world. Stephen was impelled by the Holy Spirit to witness. Let us also be sensitive to the Spirit who lives in us, to his promptings. Let us study the word of God, memorize it, feed on it. And then and only then will we be true disciples of Jesus the Christ. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. In the quiet of our hearts, let us reflect on what we have just heard. Let us thank God for his word the example of his apostle Stephen who was faithful to the end faithful to the end a man who was sensitive to the Holy Spirit who indwelt him and therefore was full of wisdom Also reminded that it is not about signs, it is about Jesus, the bread of life. The signs are only meant to help us affirm our faith in Him. Any sign that takes away from the glory of Christ and focuses the attention on man. Is false, is fake. That always ought to be our yardstick. Does this sign build up our faith in Christ or in man? Let 
just thank God for a new week. Let us commit all that we are and all that we have into his care. Pray and asking his mercy and favor on us and our loved ones. Let us pray for our dear nation, Ghana. Let us pray for that wisdom that was given Stephen to be given to our leaders on all in authority. That this country will be justly, peaceably, and quietly governed. And that this nation will fulfill the purpose and plan of God. Let us bring before the throne of grace all who have asked for our prayer and support. Let us join our hearts in thanksgiving with our sister who thanks God this morning for her business the blessings of God upon that business. God has seen her through 20 years of self-employment. It is not easy. May God continue to favor her and her business in the years ahead. We leave the management and staff before God. Pray that we may work diligently and honestly so that many more job employment opportunities will be created to help with unemployment problems. And so bring your own work, bring your businesses before God in this new month of May, this new week, that his blessings may abound on the work of your hands. Finally, let us all pray for an infilling of the Holy Spirit. That our faith in Christ will be strengthened. Oh, that we'll be faithful witnesses of the good news. In spite of the rejection and persecution we will encounter in this world. That we'll remain faithful unto the end. And win souls for his kingdom. as we wind up on our prayer. Let us together say, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Please bow your heads and ask for God's blessing. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon us. Remain with us and our loved ones today and forevermore. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Our recessional hymn is ancient and modern 290.